Because God is the one that gives us our messages. God is the one that gives us the truth of the Bible. Without him, everything we're doing over here is pointless. We should blind ourselves to that which is human, to the visible. We serve an invisible God. We have a task here on earth. That's where it all, all comes down to. So leave your glory to human beings. Let your glory be to God alone. We will be reading from Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 19 to chapter 10 and verse 6. I'm going to give you time to page, so don't worry. It's Hebrews chapter 9 verse 19 up to chapter 10 verse 6. We are going to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, the docetists will say, Oh, Jesus had blood in his body? And we'll say, yes, Jesus really did have blood inside his body. He even has blood in his body today, but that's a sermon for a different day. Some theologians might say, uh, They don't know if the blood of Jesus Christ is such a central issue in Christianity as a religion. And to that we say, you might want to read your Bible again. And then we have people who pray, I cover the blood, I cover your cool drink with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover this nail polish with the blood of Jesus Christ. And they talk about the blood of Jesus Christ like it's some invisible liquid that you can use in any way. And that's also not right because you can do that and eventually commit blasphemy um, because you're misunderstanding what it's about. So there are people that work through the Bible and they don't see how the blood of Jesus Christ is, as a topic is developed and they also invent all kinds of unorthodox doctrines about the blood of Jesus Christ. So today we're going to look at the blood of Jesus Christ and see why it's a valuable doctrine. People are afraid to preach about it because there's so much discord and that shouldn't be. That's a shame. Jesus' blood is a very special thing. So we're reading from Hebrews in chapter 9 verse 19 up to chapter 10 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19, from verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once, in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, 
make the, sinner, uh, the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me, prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. We read thus far. The Old Testament holds so many truths for us to learn. And if you want to learn more about the blood of Jesus, that's a great place to go. The law that Moses got from God had to be dedicated with scarlet wool, water, and hyssop, and last but not least, blood. And not only that, but all the ornaments and the holy furniture, everything inside the tabernacle had to be sprinkled with blood because these things had to be purged. Purged. Why did it need to be purged? From what? It's very simple. The priests inside the tabernacle that worked over there, they were sinful too, just like you and me. It's a shocker, but it's true. Psalm 130 verse 3 says, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Psalm 143 verse 2, And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Proverbs 20 verse 9, Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure of my sin. This presence of sin in each person explains the reaction of the Israelites when God spoke the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. Let's hear how that was presented, how they reacted. Exodus 20, verse 17 to 19. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor is man's servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. If you were to appear before God with your sin still upon you, you would immediately know the threat of death is upon you. There is so much majesty and authority in God. He is above all creation, the universe. Even if there's something beyond the universe, you would be over that. He is above everything. We should have great reverence and respect for God, and that goes without saying. No wonder that even dead ornaments need to be without sin. If anything, they should worship God. And that's actually what Jesus spoke about in Luke 19, verse 38 to verse 40. The followers of Jesus said, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, That master rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that. If these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. 
And it's the same with these ornaments. They should worship God, and so they had to be purged by the blood of bulls and goats, calves and boats, goats. This is a consistent principle in the Old Testament law. Everything that had to do with sin had to be covered with blood. If you committed any crime against God, your soul had no rest until the blood was shed. Thank goodness for the sacrifices that God provided for Israel. Thank goodness that God wanted a relationship with the Israelites, with us. But this was only an image, a shadow of things to come. The glories was yet to come in Jesus Christ. The tabernacle didn't represent simply earthly things. It represented things in the heaven. The tabernacle was designed after a pattern of things that were present in heaven. It gave the Israelites a message from God so that they knew, yes, we had this earthly task, but there's more to it. The high priest bringing the sacrifices on behalf of the people of Israel represented Jesus Christ bringing himself as a sacrifice on behalf of mankind. The lamp stamp inside the tabernacle represented Jesus as the light of the world. The table of showbread, the, the table with all the bread on it, represented Jesus as the bread of life. But what if the whole nation sinned? What if there was a general sin or a sin that they did not know about? Here's where it gets interesting. That's when the high priest took a terrible risk. He had to bathe himself. He had to wear special clothing. He had to offer a bull for the sins of himself and his family. And once, only once a year, with the day of Yom Kippur, he had to bring the sacrifice of Yom Kippur, which was a goat. And that sacrifice had to be two. They had to have two goats. The one they confessed the sins upon. So the sins are that side. The sins go that side. And the other one, they used the blood of the other one. So even the confessing of the sins and the blood had to be separated. So the blood can be brought into the holiest of holy places in the tabernacle. And this is where it gets risky. Because when you're in front of God, you're in front of majesty. But with that blood, he was able to sprinkle it on the mercy seat. And that's where the Israelites knew that there was mercy in heaven. The tabernacle was after the pattern of things in heaven, so the mercy seat showed them that there was mercy in heaven. And what was sprinkled on the mercy seat? Blood. What a wonderful reality it is that Jesus did not have to settle these formalities on earth inside a tabernacle or a temple but that he was able to go up to heaven with his invaluable flawless perfect sinless blood and settle eternal life eternal forgiveness for us with that blood from the cross in our blood there's nothing that can do such a thing. Our blood means nothing compared to that. Jesus' blood is everything. Philippians 2 verse 8 says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Romans 5 verse 9 says, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved 
from the wrath through him. The Holy One, the Messiah, the Son of God. We all inherited the traits of our blood from our Father. But Jesus' blood is a whole different ballgame. His blood is divine. And to think that his skin had to be pierced so that that blood could flow. Can you imagine that? It's unthinkable or almost unthinkable from an Old Testament perspective. Jesus was undaunted. He had no pride in him. Yes, the Bible talks of him being afraid before the crucifixion or stressed. But in terms of pride, he had no fear of putting that down for our sake. He rose to the pinnacle of humility. He rose to a height of humility that should only receive glory. And for that, um, he is exalted on high. On that cross, he did the most wonderful th thing. On that cross is where those bruises, those hor horrible, unnatural bruises that he should not have had, says to mankind, this is how much I love you. Have you ever wondered why we celebrate communion? This is the reason why we celebrate communion. It is to remember how Jesus' body was broken for us. We celebrate communion we, when we eat that bread. It's about how Jesus' body was broken for us. When we drink that wine... It is to remember that there is a New Testament, a New Testament in Jesus' blood, so that we can rejoice in that New Testament. Communion is not a magical ritual where we conjure up magical th things to happen. Communion is a remembrance. It is a way to get back to the foundational doctrine of our faith. It's what our religion comes down to. Jesus' blood was shed for our sins. The blood of Christ should evoke a lot of reverence from every one of us. It sets us free and secures us for eternity. Jesus is our Savior. We have been bought with a price. You have an appreciation for the blood of Jesus Christ if you have an understanding of the gospel. Colossians 1 verse 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 to 19 says, For as much as ye know, that you are, were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In a sense, it should never have happened, but he freely gave it. Jesus freely gave his blood. And in that sense, it was ordained from the beginning of time. He freely gave his blood because that was for us. God planned this so carefully. And it's a glorious thing because it not only worked, but it gives us a righteousness that we do not deserve. We have now become Jesus' precious possession through that work. He has pulled us up out of the miry pit with that blood. We have become sheep, part of the fold of God, 
through that blood. We are his treasure. Let us make ourselves beautiful for Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What a wonderful and precious gift. Let us clothe ourselves with righteousness. Let us have a life that is a worship and a glorification of God. Let us tell everybody about the blood of Jesus Christ. And let us know that Jesus' work on the cross is the witness of his unfathomable love. Amen.